Welcome back to the GSTL TSL, the former TSL player, TSL Rain, coming out for Fnatic now. And we are going to actually have a quick interview with our coaches, Juani and of course Jessica. Juani was a little bit nervous earlier, he always is at the GSTL. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see what he has to say about today's match and also about the first game. He's good friends with the Slayers players and the coaches and uh, well, he's really good for about today's games. Only friends with every coach actually. Jessica actually expected Rain to come out next. And uh, she's pretty confident that JYP is already prepared to play against him. When they practiced, Rain prepared in particular to defeat JYP. Yeah, they were in the same team before, so Rain knows JYP very well, and this is basically the idea behind the choice. <laughs> Look at that watch! <laughs> you could kill someone with that thing, it looks dangerous. If you throw that... <laughs> Puzzle was going to go for first in the ranking, but he's not able to be here today because he's traveling. And uh, Koka's happy though, so he might actually be able to get that first place spot, referring of course to individual player stats in GSTL. As a foreign team, they want to be the first team to make it to the semifinals. And of course, Slayers wants to go to Heyunde, the beach finals. And you know what? Like I said last time, no matter what happens, we get to go. <laughs> It doesn't matter who loses or who wins, man. You and I get to go to Hyundai, so I'm happy. The one question that I actually have, not only to you, but also to all, all our viewers out there, is um, the last thing that Juani actually said, that they Fnatic as a foreign team. Is Fnatic, in your uh, opinion, still a foreign team, even though they don't have a single Fauna on the bench right now? Uh, and I mean... This is a question that I'm actually really interested in. So you guys can of course also send us uh, your opinion on uh, Twitter, just either at Wolf, at Proxy Wolf, or at me, at Caldo. But that is really a good question. We had the same thing, but with FXO, um, when they just started to uh, get more Korean players, yeah. and slowly but steadily the foreigners left. So when does a team actually um, stop being a foreign team? To me, if a team has no foreign players, uh, then they are not a foreign team. This team is foreign owned, so if you want to if you want to talk about the ownership of the team, then yes, of course, it's a foreign team. And in that sense, I think technically you have to call it a foreign team. But in my eyes, I don't see this team as a foreign team. I see it as a Korean team because a, that bench is c full of Korean players who trained with Korean players, and there were foreigners at the time staying here. So it's hard to say. You know, I don't really think a clarification or a classification is needed, but. In my eyes, it feels like a Korean team, just like Slayers does to me. To me, basically the same. So I would really be interested in what you guys think. So send us your opinion uh, on Twitter. By and the way, free pizza. Yeah. And thankfully, this time, they don't place it in front of us. This is actually a different pizza company than I'm Yeah, it's with. not it's not Pizza School. Not Pizza School, not Pizza Tang. I don't know what pizza company that is, but... Uh, yeah, there are two pizza companies, right? Like, let's say in a... About a block Hundred, away, a block, 100 yeah. meters, well, something along those lines. So yeah, this this one I've never seen before. Yeah, this one's new. I'm a little bit curious, but I just ate. You and I actually both ate for this, so we, we're not hungry either. We're just feeling good. That's yeah. fine. I'm like pizza. No, I ate something slightly healthier than this. Slightly. <laughs> yeah, Korean food, and I actually love that. You introduced that to me. Yeah, it's called bude chige. Um, you guys can look that up. It's actually a traditional food that comes from. Uh, war times when there was not a lot of food to eat, but it's now a commonly eaten food in Korea. Some people would call it traditional. I don't know if I would, but either way, we Rain. are. 
Yep, we were going to see Rain play against JYP now on Ohana. Rain is doing quite well lately. He's definitely laddering it up on the Korean ladder like crazy. Is very successful there and. Well, in uh, I told, told a little bit, I told a little bit about his style and that he sometimes likes to be a bit more cheesy, and he has proven this uh, amongst other games in the NASL recently against Mana, where he actually proxied in uh, three consecutive games. Yeah, and he's chosen a two-player map here, so this may be something that we see from him. This is the GSTL Fnatic against Slayer ZG with Caldor and Wolf. Starting to the top left of the map is the second Fnatic player of the day. Starting for his team here. It is... Fnatic Lady Call Lane! There he is. His hair has actually changed quite a bit over the years. His opponent starting to the bottom right though, in the blue. We have the Protoss player who decided the first game in favor of his team, we have EG, JYP. JYP doing really well against yeah. Yal. Now he's <laughs> he's like, oh wait a second, my hair is not right. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> um, I really, I have this image in my head always of Rain uh, from the open seasons and his performance there. He was very all in back then, doing a ton of one base timing attacks. Was Slayers fan number one, Jacob from Denmark. There's EG fighting. But uh, now he's kind of changed up his style, does not always do these aggressive type of builds. But he was doing Marine marine SCB all-ins, like you mentioned, doing the Marine SCB pull almost as much as bit by bit was. He was just doing it well. Oh, this guy bought the pizza today, apparently. He's trying to hide out, but... Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's really nice of you, man. That, wow, thank you for buying that pizza. There's always somebody buying pizza at a GSL studio. It's a mystery as to who it's going to be. Yeah, the one thing that all those pizzas have in common is that we never get one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing that they have in common. That's true, man. <laughs> well, sometimes, actually, when I come to watch Kodas, I can sneak sneak a slice or two. I'm able to get away with that, but... Well, no, not if I'm working. There's no pizza to be had. Okay. Jokes aside, guys, this uh, should be pretty good. It's so far, Rain without a proxy, and as mentioned earlier in the interview, Rain and JYP, they were in the same team. They really know each other well, and that is one of the main reasons why Fnatic actually chose to uh, use Rain here against uh, JYP. Also, the reason why JYP earlier thought it was pretty funny. Of course, Jessica also predicted it, but this is going to be really, really interesting. Oh, by the way, he's actually showing an SCB here, which Further indicates he's going to do one Rex expand, and he kills the probe. But guess what? He's taking double gas in his main. So this is really tricky. This is really sneaky, and I'm a big fan of this. Plus, he's got an SCV position that may be for proxying. I love plays like this. I really like it when a player tries to uh, fake his opponent out. So this might be something uh, that JYP is going to fall for. At the same time, already Rain with an SCV in his opponent's main base is trying to get an idea of what exactly is going on here. Yeah, here we had a quick. Uh, sorry to interrupt you here, but you had a quick look at the win rate. And in uh, Terran versus Protoss, Ohana is really Terran favored. 11 wins and only 6 wins for Protoss. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty lopsided for sure. Just if he looks like it will not escape, so he's not going to be proxying with this one. Just used it for a scout. He wanted to see whether or not the second gas had been taken, and in fact it had not. So this will allow him to do this build a little bit more comfortably because it means he's not going to have a fast robotics to deal with, which means no fast immortals or potentially even a uh, faster observer to scout. So he's going to feel really comfortable with this. He's got a bunker on the high ground. He's got these two marines here, but they're not going to be enough to stop the stalker if the stalker commits to seeing that there's no racks or rather uh, no command center up there. With the one stalker, that is something that a lot of players just will not do. And I love this. This reminds me so much of uh, a game between Braddock and Whitera that I casted a few months ago. It was a series that completely, it just baffled me because the mind games that were going on in uh, the series were just amazing. And this is basically exactly the same thing. Rain is just trying to completely fake him out here. As you already said, he showed the SCB on the low ground. Now he has the bunker and he is showing his opponent exactly what you would expect if there's an expansion. But no, Rain is going uh, for the one base build so far, adding the starport right now. And JYP, he has no idea. 
Yeah, he is totally in the dark here. I mean, he had that stock at least enough, but he didn't try to commit, didn't try to run by, so he's not going to see no command center. The Marine's very diligently checking, making sure there's nothing to scout. I love this. I really love it. It's great. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this. We do see the, the choice has been made for JYP to go for three gates before Robo, which means his robotics is even later than it could have been, so it means later scouting of this with an observer, later immortals against the siege tanks he's going to face. First siege tank's already on its way. We've seen a lot of people doing this two racks into siege tank build recently. The person who does it, I think, more than anyone else and does it better than everyone else right now is actually Bion, and I'm looking forward to seeing how Rain is going to execute this. Ooh, making a Reaper right now, interestingly enough. That's going to allow him to get some additional additional scouting information. Yep. Can sneak in there and uh, I, I, this is beautiful. This is just beautiful play. If you have mind games going on like this, this is just so cool. This is actually why a lot of Protoss players will use one or two scouting units, maybe a Zealot and a Stalker in order to get a good look at the expansion because they want to know exactly, okay, you've shown me that you want to expand, but did you? Oh, and he loses the Stalker. Oh, that's, that's, that's tough. That's really tough for him now. Now he has no unit on the map. He has basically, he lost the Zelnaga Watchtower and he has no clue what's happening. Worst case scenario right now would be that the Observer is going to be picked off, but it doesn't even matter anymore because Rain decided that it's now time to start with his push. Yeah, and actually he may just use this Reaper to clear up the Watchtower before he pushes as well. That would be actually so sick if he doesn't know. He's moving right into it, but the Observer will see everything. So we're flying right over that army right now. You guys can't see it, but you can. if you look very close on the map, you can see he has just seen everything, including the small SCV pull. He's pulling five SCVs with this. He's got a medevac on the way, and those sentries will be able to force him to siege up once early, but then after that second siege up, he's not going to be able to use these. He can't even siege up. He's uh, missed his timing a little bit. The siege mode is not done just yet, but this force is strong nonetheless. The Reaper completely useless here, walking up the ramp completely alone, not trying to sneak in here. And a nice force field block here, but the siege mode is uh, will be done in a few seconds. Yeah, this is actually the biggest problem for him right now. With siege mode, he would have already sieged up and forced this army back to the cross. Units are getting a lot of free hits in here on these Marines, and now it is done. Force fields are no longer going to be of use. And this is the scary part. I actually don't think that this uh, this bunker is in a good position. If he uses his immortal on the high ground, he will be able to take it down. But now he's moving in immediately. And oh wow, JYP losing the pylon on the high ground is now even supply block. It couldn't be worse for him. No, it really could not. He's trying to get in a good position with his stalkers here on the low ground. But there's just so many marines and with the medevac healing, he can almost do whatever he wants. He can fall back to the siege tanks. This is a terrible position. The immortal trying to regain its shields. Here comes a hellion even. And he just knows that he's got to pull his probes here. A lot of them going down, but he's lost mining at his natural. No commander though for Rain just yet. The problem for JYP is not only that he's in an awkward position on the low ground here, but he can't reconnect his forces. He can't actually bring his units down the ramp. Not with the bunker there, not with the siege tanks firing at the ramp. This is a terrible position. Looks like he's going to stem and take out these units on the low ground while he gets his tanks into position. Tanks at the bottom of the ramp right now in range of the Stalkers. They mortal dies and here come the Marines taking down the Stalkers immediately. The one medivac is sniped by JYP. Well done. So right now the Terran player without vision onto the high ground. As I said, a second medivac arrives. Yep, and remember, plus one armor actually did finish for our Pros player, and he does have his first Colossus out now. If he gets some good swipes here, he may be able to take out some of these Marines, but he has to be oh so careful about those Siege Tanks. Yeah, the Siege Tanks are his biggest problem at this point. Of course, we now have Vikings as well in order to counter those Colossi, but this is not going to be easy for JYP. Both of them now being on one base. Rain not trying to expand here. He is trying to end this with his push, and he's in a great position containing his opponent. With a few units, though, trying to catch the reinforcements. This one pile to the left side of the map is sure worth its money and gold. Oh, absolutely, man. He's actually killed so many units with that, and I just love the patience of JYP sitting on the top of his ramp carefully right now, planning out his next move. He may actually start uh, with these two Colossi to try to push, but with the position he has in the middle of the map, catching reinforcements, he does not have to go anymore. If he waits, he will have more units than his opponent eventually if he cuts off every single reinforcement. This really actually puts uh, Rain into an awkward position. He does not have combat shields. He only has Stim. Oh, he's actually being really bold with these Marines. He's going to be so careful with those. The cannot problem, lose them. The big problem is as soon as we have enough Vikings there, it's going to be so hard for JYP to move out. There's only one Viking though. Looks like JYP he may go. He uses the timing here, tries to attack. He has still one immortal on the high ground, taking down these tanks. One of them immediately dead. Well done by JYP. He really holds on to this game. And losing yeah. the expansion, of course, is a bit of a... 
Well, it stings, but at the same time, it's not the end of the game. He for actually him. can break out now. The tanks are out will. of position, and he's just going to go for it. The Viking gets targeted down. He takes out one bunker, loses a few units in the process, but he's actually now in great shape. He's damaging these reinforcements still continuously with those units in the middle of the map. And actually, I feel with this extra mortal that's about to come out, he can definitely break this contain if he wants to. This is really tense right now. This could go either way. JYP is oh, sniping another tank. Is he able to get it? The reinforcements being attacked, the Viking being picked off. Well done. And the Protoss is still ahead in Harvesters. He has a great army He's and he decides go. to move out. He goes down the ramp and the Colossi dies, but the rest of them... Oh, whoa, both of them are dead. And now the tanks, will they be able to push it? Nine Marines were out of position as well at the back because they were cut off by the Stalkers and JYP breaks out. He has done wow. it. Really, really well done. He's able to push through here. He takes down Fnatic Reign's army, and now suddenly the Terran player is on the retreat. JYP on the move, Reign trying to fall back into an expansion with War Prison being built for JYP, and he moves across the map. He does. He wants to end it now. He wants to end it, and I think he very well may be able to. There are two siege tanks in position, one on the super high ground, one on the high ground at the wide ramp. This is going to be difficult for him to engage without Colossi. He does not have any Colossi in this composition. But he's got so many zealots, he's going to have to wait here a little bit longer, perhaps for that warp prism. It was a great strategy by Rain. JYP had no idea, but then he reacted so well. He retreated with his units onto the high ground. He sacked his expansion. He built up an army, waited for those colossi, and then he moved out trying to take Rain's army apart, broke the contain, and now both of them just trying to fall back onto the expansion. Observer gets sniped. You couldn't see that on screen, but we had a nice scan by Rain. Was able to spot the Observer and kill it with one of his Vikings. Yeah. Well done. That means no high ground vision and no vision of whether or not his opponent is moving out, what uh, sort of mining conditions he's in. Now both of them expanding at this point. Consider that combat shields are now about to finish. We do have plus one attack on the way for JYP who already has the armor upgrade. He's going for a zealot drop. Now if he can eliminate a few of these SCVs, it's going to be good for him. Right now the worker count 36 to 33. But I think that the Zealot drop may actually be more of a uh, liability for JYP than actually being a value because it just depends on when he goes. If he waits when he sees these units moving out and then he sends it in, that's quite smart because right now he's got the Watchtower with the probe. He's going to see this army moving out and exactly what, what does he do? He sends the Warp Prism. This is genius. He sends the War Prism in right away and this is going to be a big problem for Rain. He doesn't have any units at home defending it. This is not going to be easy, especially with an additional warp in. And Rain is already in the middle of the map. Here comes the drop, dropping into the mineral line. And he's losing a lot of his SCP. He's moving back immediately. Can't really decide on what to do right yeah, now. Yeah, he's being a little bit indecisive. He sends only his Vikings back. And yeah, sure, that'll clean up the War Prism. But the War Prism's not even going to be here anymore. The Zealots do continue to do damage. He's trying to decide if he wants to fight this army in the middle of the map, but with four siege tanks with only one Colossus there, it's just not something he can do. Nice control here on these Marines, targeting down the Zealots. He will actually just lose a few Marines. Warp Prism is thwarted and taken out. Looks like he wants to go, J but there are tanks in position. Uh, he walks right into the tanks. There's only one uh, one Colossus and no Vikings, but here come, here come all the Stalkers and the Stalker chase them down. They flank, take the siege tanks apart. Very, very well done here by JYP. Great unit split. Was able to clean this Terran army on no problem at all. Rain is looking a little bit desperate here, Keldor. He's He pulled his SCVs way away from those Zelts. They're out in the middle of the map, not even mining. Now the rocks are being taken out for our pros, who's now at 1 1 upgrades. The upgrades really showing through in these fights. And Rain is down 20 supply. The Twilight Council is on the way. And all that Rain is doing back at home is making more siege tanks and Marines, but his opponent's tech. It continues. Every single time both of them uh, are engaged in a fight, JYP comes out ahead. A little bit more ahead. Now even starts his uh, extended thermal lens. He waited very, very long with this upgrade. Earlier on he wanted to have those Colossi out. Uh, he wanted to increase his Colossi count, so he skipped the upgrade. Might even have forgotten it for a while there, but now he restarts extended uh, thermal lens. And we have so many, how many stalkers do we actually have? 10. 10 stalkers, 12 zealots, also a few immortals. This is a really, really big army for JYP, and he has a lot of them out on the map. But he's going to be careful because, yeah, they're out on the map, and he actually walked all the way around the watchtower with this force, of course, referring to Rain here. Oh, getting the Vikings, though, is pretty huge. 
Oh, it is, but range is not done yet. That's yeah. a bit of a problem for him here. And charge isn't done either. So this might prove to be difficult, but Rain moves back. He doesn't really have the Siege tank count at this point. He has a three with his push, and he has another one back at home. And he's only got the one medevac as well, which means that these Marines are not going to last as long against Zealots as you would like them to do, to do. The thing is that the longer JYP waits, the better actually for Rain, because JYP doesn't rebuild probes. And Rain is already ahead in the uh, in the Harvester count. Or, well, he's about to close the uh, the gap. He has more. Uh, he has well, he has mules. He has, he he has, he, yeah, he's he got more, more income but right now. His income is actually really good. This pylon is actually very, very nice, especially with the Observer to warp in units on the high ground. Yep. But Rain, he looked he looked like he was in a really bad spot about three, four minutes ago. But right now, he's getting back into the game. Yeah, the problem for him, I feel, the real main problem upgrades. is the, the upgrades, but also the tech. The tech is just not in his favor either. He keeps losing Vikings. He has no answer for the Colossi right now, which R2, when the range has finished, charge is going to be done as well. And with that composition against just Marines with tanks, with very few medevacs out, and total just one right now still, he's not going to be able to compete with that army. That Protoss army will tear him to shreds. And JYP, does he have to fight? He doesn't even have to. You can actually take a third base right now if he wants to. He is in a great position. Stalker's gonna check. But as I said, JYP is on 37 probes on two bases. He doesn't build any harvesters at all. And in the long run, that will hurt him. Right now it does not, but if he uh, waits too long, then he will have a problem with this. Yeah, you're right. I'm actually a little bit surprised that he's not continuing his probe production. He's not in a situation where he needs to cut those anymore. Colossi leading the charge. He's gonna pick off the Viking. And look at this. Look at how much damage done to these Marines already, losing only shields on those Colossi. And with no medevacs to heal them, this is a terrible position for Rain. He cannot keep up the fight right now. Can you check the starport of Rain, please? The one thing that really baffles me a little bit is that the entire time... He doesn't have an add-on. He doesn't have the reactor. That's the thing that I was wondering about for a long, a long time right now. We only have, like, one medivac of one Viking building. And I have to say that at this point, he should at least get a reactor. Yeah, I feel like they're both playing a little bit scared at this point. Oh... It's a weird situation to be in. This is not your standard game. Yeah, you're right. And if you make a reactor, you have to realize that that's, that costs the same amount of time as building a second starport even. Plus, you lose the time on the starport. So I can see his idea there. But yeah, if he had a reactor, he would have so many more medevacs and or Vikings, whichever he preferred. Great concave setup here for Rain. And he's going to send a small squad of Marines with a Marauder. But, but during this, this is, is terrible because he's going to be attacked while his army's out of position. And those two Colossi do way too much damage. We don't have Vikings on the map just now in order to counter them. And here comes JYP, forces Rain back and chase the map. That was an unfortunate moment for him to send those units out, but really the story of the day was the upgrades. The Guardian Shield, the plus one armor, you just saw how quickly those Zealots tore through the Marines. No medevacs to heal them, the Colossi doing the damage, no Vikings, no medevacs, no victory. But that is basically the problem that he had, and I think that was the deciding point here in this game, that we did not have a reactor. He was not able to get those medevacs and Vikings out fast enough. A couple of times he was really, he had a lot of money, he had really a lot of minerals, a lot of gas, and with the reactor he could have started his Vikings in his medivac production, but as those were missing and the upgrades, it was just too much for him to uh, compensate yeah. for. So, the rain actually, you know, I have to say, he looks like the rain of 2010 and 2011 in that game. He goes for the, the marine tank build, it makes an expansion after he puts pressure on his opponent, it's a little bit late. And he kind of struggles through the mid game after he's made his choice. Rain's build is was good. You mentioned it, and actually, I think the most critical point here was that his siege mode was late. If his siege mode was done, he sieges up right after the four seals and takes out some of those sentries. That timing didn't really work for him. When he arrived at his opponent's main base, the siege mode was done to like 60 70%. So he had to wait for quite a while before he could siege up. And before that happened, he actually lost a few of his Marines to the first force fields that we saw. So that was one of uh, a problem. And later on, I really think that his production... Even I think he could have even afforded a second starport at a, a certain point. He needed something to increase his, his production at that starport. He wasn't always using it. At times, you know, he couldn't afford it. His economy was it was weak for quite some time. His opponent had that extra mining earlier on from having that nexus. Eventually, he lost it, but he had extra money overall in general. His tech was ahead, and that Rain, was the problem. It was just getting better. With the harvest account that he had and the double mule, it was definitely getting better, but still JYP didn't leave him the time to f completely recover and build up an army to counter his own. His tech was just better, the upgrades, the Colossi that he had, that was really well done. So, not the standard game, a lot of freestyle here, but very interesting, very tense, very close. And now Fnatic down two games. Sends out Moon. Moon. 
Moon absolutely can kill JYP, but Calder, the map choice. He moonwalks into his booth. The map choice is in Toon Valley. Now this is oh, unprecedented. Right. Is Zerg player choosing a tomb against a Protoss? I think this may be the first time this has ever happened. This may be the first time a Zerg has ever consciously chosen this map against a Protoss in the GSTL. And it's going to be Moon. That just shows his confidence to begin with. And in some ways, choosing Moon here is somewhat of a gamble because if he loses to someone who's good in Protoss versus Zerg, then, well, there's Moon gone. But in some ways, Moon can do this, and if he does, then your next choice, who are you going to send out against Moon, becomes an even more difficult one. It's the fifth race, guys. This guy broke game out for uh, an eternity. Yep. Average wins 1.0. Always a good stat to see in the team league. This guy, uh, is, I mean, he's been around forever. Playing for We Made Fox before it's disbanding. Now playing for Fnatic. Top notch Warcraft 3 player, and in Starcraft 2, he doesn't look any worse. I mean, honestly, this guy has impressed a lot of people in his team league performance so far this season. It's going to be a good one. Another Zerg versus Protoss. JYP showing earlier that he's really comfortable in the matchup. Up to a certain uh, point, I think, because a lot of Protoss players really don't like Zerg too much. No, that's, that's actually true. There's, there's quite a few of those out there. I'm okay with Zerg. If Todd is actually watching, then I want to give a quick shout out to Todd. <laughs> uh, yeah, shout out to Todd. A great Protoss player, but I don't think there's anything in the entire world that he hates more than Roaches. You know, I, I can't I, I can't imagine Todd not watching. I mean, he's the captain of Fnatic after all. So yeah, I think so. He's got to be watching. <laughs> I certainly hope so. I hope so as well. Well, we are going to get started right away. Slayer's EG is on a tear right now. 2-0 Moon is the player that Fnatic needs right now. Can he come through for his team? Tough map to play on, but it's his choice, so I mean, I can't even make that statement. Moon chose this map. It's his choice. He's crazy. I mean, he's going to... He, he chose this map for a reason. There has to be there some has kind of to be strategy that he really wants to uh, make work. And JYP is wondering as well. He's like, okay, this is odd. I'll take it, but I will make sure that I will scout uh, every move. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. JYP against Moon at the GSTL. Hold on, Wolf.